continuing uh, on a series of cultivating a love and delight for God's Word. And uh, we're going to be looking at Scripture out of Psalm 119 and others. <sighs> I have to relax a little bit. I got this right off. Great. We've got uh, four um, points on the outline. I think the last one's going to have a few subpoints because I've got four verses grouped in with that one. But uh, yeah, let's get into this. Oh, I don't really have any humor. Well, I can make it humorous. <laughs> so, have you ever been stuck in a, in a rut? Maybe you're spiritually stuck in a rut. Um, so, uh, this is a, a photo off of uh, a, a, um, someone was sharing a, a online a spiritual experience and uh, <laughs> One night, uh, they were going, uh, going home, and there was like a heavy rain, and they got stuck and had to walk. It was a baby, so, someone doing babysitting for someone, and late at night, they're taking them back home. And they had to walk a mile in the mud and rain. Anyway, the car was stuck in mud. <clears throat> My sermon today is going to be talking a little bit about uh, your path, the path that you go, and how God's Word is able to protect uh, us in our in our walk in our life in our path, uh, and also looking at uh, the fact that we want to be on God's path in life. <laughs> I uh, one uh, before I met Mary, I was working uh, at this. Uh, okay, that's not my photo. It's pretty deep snow, <laughs> but uh, I was driving through some real fresh snow. It had to be a foot deep or more. There was one car that had gone down this road, and there was a path, a ruts through the snow. And uh, I was trying very hard to stay in it because the snow, if you get out, it will pull your car off the road, and you'll be stuck. So some ruts you want to be in, some ruts you don't want to be in. <laughs> And uh, the, the thing about ruts is that they are packed down, so usually that is good for traction. Um, and, uh, it, and it also shows, well, somebody made it through here. <laughs> Maybe I can, too. Uh, but in the scripture, we're going to be looking at uh, that God has a, has a road, has a path for us. And we want to stay on that path because when we get off that path, we get in trouble. So we're cultivating a love and delight for God's Word. And this, uh, this love and delight and joy that we have uh, when, we, when we read and study God's Word and, and put it into, into our heart and into our minds, this will keep us, uh, it will keep us uh, on God's path, and this, it will also keep us looking into His Word as we develop more love for it. Uh, because the, the, the distractions of the world can pull us away, and we need to hold on to God's word because that's where we, we can be safe, and the Lord wants us there. So we're going to be looking at uh, the, sec the second section in Psalm 119 is, uh, is Bet, uh, which uh, is... So I'm going to talk about that kind of briefly, but I don't know if I'm going to do it right away. But... Uh, Talking about having desire to live a morally pure and upright, righteous life. So the psalmist here uh, is seems to be concerned about his morally his his life in that way. And uh, so we all should we all should be concerned about that as Christians. Then you must have a love and delight for God's word. And as we read through a number of, of psalms, and especially in Psalm 119, we see a lot of words about, uh, about you know, meditating and focusing on God's word and, and his love for us and what God has done for us and, and how the word of God is helpful. So what better than Psalm 119? It focuses on the, the significance of God's word and what it means to the psalmist and his delight. Okay. So I was looking at that word delight. A lot of commentaries talk about it being uh, 
a, a bubbling joy, like an excitement that you have. And I don't know if I open my Bible and I get like really excited about, you know, okay, I'm going to have Bible study time. Uh, but spiritually, we, we should have excitement there because we need to nourish our spirit. We need to nourish our inner self. And the Word of God is how we do that. Because this world is so full of things that just bog us down. We get stuck in the you know, spiritual ruts of life and we just can't get out of it. But when we turn to God's Word, there are all kinds of things that can help us. So in Psalm 119, we, we see that it's uh, laid out as an acrostic. Now, last, uh, last time, it wasn't last week, but last time I shared, we started the first section. And I didn't really uh, go into a whole lot of uh, introductory about Psalm 119. I did mention a little bit about it. But it's uh, interesting how it's written. And there's a few different places in Scripture where they have acrostics and, you know, and all these different forms of po poetic writing. And uh, even Paul, when he lists things and, and writes, there are memory aids that uh, a lot of writers will put in there and because these are things that are important and we want, we want you to remember it. But maybe the author of Psalm 119 did it that way uh, to help as a, as a memory aid. There are uh, 22 sections for each of the Hebrew letters and in each section there's eight verses and in each of those sections, those, each of those verses begin with the same letter of that section of the alphabet. So Aleph, Bet, Gimel, and Ta. And or all the way through to ta, that's the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And uh, so last, like I said, Aleph was the one we did last time. An interesting thing, too, another commentary was talking about bet uh, is uh, a word for house, house or home. You're, and in, so this uh, is almost talking about Making your heart God's the home for God's word. <laughs> In addition to its structure, Psalm 119 uses nine words consistently to represent God's word, to uh, explain or uh, you know all different characteristics of God's word. And the first one I want to have here is is way. You know, I was talking about, it's, it's also a word that is used for your track in life. It's the path that you go. So I was talking about ruts, and that could be used in that. Uh, that it's, it's the course that you take in life, and there are different words used for that. This one specifically more often is used for God's, w the ways of God, rather than the ways of man. <clears throat> And then there's testimonies to testify, bear witness to, uh, and so forth. And then there's precepts, and I'm not reading all of the Hebrew uh, writing uh, of, the, of the words. Particular instructions of the Lord, and I'd shorten some of these, but because uh, these uh, definitions were a little, little bit longer, but it gives us the gist of it. And then commandments, authoritative commands, emphasis is often on the straight authority of what is said. And then I've got the last few, word. Now there's a few different uses of this. Uh, a lot of translations will use this word as sayings. Um, so this is uh, to bring forth to light, hence to say. Anything God has spoken, commanded, or promised. And then there's the Torah, the law, uh, to point out, to show instructions, direction, teaching, or to teach, to instruct. And then there's judgment. And some translations also use uh, rules. And then there's, and again, that judgment word sometimes is translated as laws, but there's the Torah that is used for law, but then plural, uh, the laws and the, the judgments of God. Statutes, to engraving and scribing. So it's, it's like writing, and it's, it's a, like a permanence. God's statutes, they last forever. And then there's word and words again. The, bar, the spoken word, God's revealed word to humanity. 
that which proceeds from the mouth of God revealed to us. So those are uh, many of the words that are used in 119, and almost every one of those words are used at least 20, 24 times. And one other thing I didn't say in there was that almost every single verse of, of Psalm 119 has a word representing the word of God, except for maybe a handful and then uh, you can write James 121 on your outline because I did not get that in there when I sent it out. Uh, and then we have an intro, <clears throat> guard your way <clears throat> with the word, verse 9. Take heed to God's word, 10 through 11. A prayer for instruction, God instructs, God teach you, teach me. And that was similar to one of the verses that we went through in the first section the last time, asking God to teach. And then declaration of commitment, verses 13 to 16. And then I'm going to have a closing summary, uh, going back over these points at the end. So Psalm 119, 9 through 16, let's read that. How can a young man keep his way pure? by guarding it according to your word. And I'm going to comment, uh, it's not just young man. We all need to have our way cleansed and made pure. So some translations actually talk about um, keeping uh, cleansing here, not just keeping his way pure, but, but cleansing it. With my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. And with my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies I delight as much as in all riches. And that's interesting right there. It's like delighting in riches and, you know, God's word. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. So the, this is the, uh, these last four are in the last point of your outline. Uh, it's the commitment to do uh, to live God's word, put it into action, and to commit to meditating, committing to delighting in it, and committing to not forgetting it. It's, it's, um, and, and even to committing to, to uh, share it audibly uh, from your mouth, with my lips. Uh, so first point, guarding your way with the word. How can a young man keep his way pure? by guarding it according to your word. There's a question, and there's the answer. And uh, when I was in college, there was a number of verses I memorized, and, I, and this was one uh, part, part of this passage. Maybe it was a whole section in here uh, that I had as one of my root, uh, routine memory plans. So every month or so, I'd go back through a number of Bible verses and just keep them fresh. And uh, I, uh, along with one from James, which I'm going to get at too. So probably David, the psalmist, uh, is this young man he's writing about. Uh, but we should all be seeking cleansing in our life because life gets dirty. Spiritually, uh, we need cleansing and emotionally, and we just get baggage, and we need to learn to turn to God and unload because he's there to carry our weight. We don't need to be carrying all of it around. We need to give it to the Lord. In this world, we find ourselves bombarded by temptations to sin. And David is declaring here how we can keep our way pure clean and being unstained by the world. 
And the word of God is, is helpful for cleansing and uh, for uh, just for, you know, our, our well-being emotionally, spiritually, even physically because of, of the stress that, but uh, guarding, guarding the way with the word of God. Now, I was talking about way earlier. The course of your life and the path here. Uh, this is different, a little bit different word that is used uh, than which is later used in here for God's ways, for his way, uh, rather than man's way. Uh, but it's the, it's the path, course of life that we take. And as a young person, that is a time where you need to be really concerned and all of us have, you know, gone past that stage in our life, but decisions are made when you're younger, and it will often set the path that you take in life. And so we need to, uh, we need to keep, keep guard of that by, by staying in the word. The psalmist here, believed to be David, is concerned about being, getting corrupted by sin and desires to live a righteous life. You know, we all should be desiring to live a holy, righteous life because God, that's what God wants for us. It's, it's what I have, as should we all, since that's God's will. So it, you can almost see in a lot of these passages as we read through and go through Psalm 119 that the psalmist is earnestly seeking God that I, I desire to live a faithful and holy life. Now, the last time, uh, in the first section, the, uh, the psalmist was writing about a blessed life, and he was looking at others and why they seemed to have a blessed life, and he desired that as well. <clears throat> so now in the New Testament, James tells us to put away every evil thing and humbly grasp on to God's life-saving word. Now, that's my words there. But, uh, uh, but seriously... The word of God is what we need to be going toward and not going towards the world. Not going towards, uh, you know, self-helps or other things that are out there that the world has to offer. We need to be looking at God's word. And also, it uh, keeps us, keeps us from uh, filling our life with things that just clutter and keep us away from what God wants for us ultimately. So James says, putting away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receiving with meekness, humbleness, the implanted word, or the word that planted inside, in your heart, really, which is able to save your souls. And so God's word is intended to be planted within you, and it, it will grow, and it will strengthen you, and it will keep you. And uh, hence the title of the message I have on here is God's Word will, uh, what, what's the title? I forgot it. <laughs> will keep you clean. And so it's guarding your life. <clears throat> and then so I have in here a list of ways that God's Word helps us in our life. Now this is, you might want to write this down. It's uh, from David Guzik's study guide on, in Psalm 119 out of blueletterbible.org. And uh, he's got a lot of good things in here uh, for Psalm 119. But this has a lot of things about the Word of God. And so uh, that's what we're looking at. The Word of God sets the standard of purity so that we know right from wrong. It shows us the reasons for purity so we understand the wisdom and goodness of God's commands, the reasons for it. It shows us the difficulty of purity and reminds us to be on guard to, uh, to protect that purity. God wants us to be holy. It gives the blessings of purity and incentive to make the, the proper sacrifices so that we can maintain a pure life. It shows us how to be born again, which is important. Uh, 
I mean, what's the point of living a holy, pure life, pleasing God, without being born again? So our inner man may be transformed after the pattern of ultimate purity, Jesus. And really, that's what we want to be doing. We want to be growing more and more like Jesus as we put the word of God in our life. It shows us how to be empowered by the Holy Spirit so that uh, one has the spiritual resources to be pure. And then, throwing one more at the bottom there, it aids against temptation, giving a way of escape from enticement. And uh, there are passages, I, I will get at, li at some other point, but uh, the Word of God helps us when, we are, when we're uh, tempted. God's Word is a light that clears away the deceptive fog of seduction and temptation. It helps, to, uh, helps us make sense of what's going on around us and to see it clearly for what it really is. It's a mirror to see our spiritual and moral condition. And it gives us wise and simple commands, such as to flee youthful lusts, and, and a bunch of, a bunch of that's just one example. It washes us from impurity and actually cleanses our life in a spiritual sense. As we, fill, if, as, we, uh, as we reflect on God's word, and the Holy Spirit uses it and convicts us, and we, we repent and we give that over to God, and, uh, and then we have the promises in the scripture of what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. It is the key to the renewing of our mind and to personal, moral, and spiritual transformation. Uh, Romans 12 do not be conformed to the pattern of the world, but be transformed through the renewing of your mind. It gives a refuge against condemnation when one has been impure and shows one how to repent to come back when they have been impure and how to come back to a pure life again. So, uh, all is not lost. People do backslide. We are human. We do fall. We do sin. Uh, Jesus is there with his arms open. He wants us to come back to him. And the word of God shows us how we can do that. God's word shows us how to conduct our life so that we are an encouragement to others in purity. I thought these were really cool um, things it talks about. How the Word of God helps us in our daily, you know, life, really, and how we can look to it. And there's all kinds of scriptures to back up all of these, uh, these words in here about the Word of God. And then uh, the second point on your, take heed to God's Word. I don't often use that word today much. Take heed. <laughs> heed, is that, you know, a common word used often? Um, Heed your manners, or so forth. <laughs> uh, so here, the passage I have, oh, verse, okay. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. So, as a, you know, the psalmist is saying, with his whole heart he's seeking. He's seeking after God, and uh, yet he also knows that he's prone to wander. <clears throat> and then he says here, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. After all that, uh, the first verse in there was talking about how can, how can you keep your way pure? By guarding it according to you know, the word. And here, he's talking about storing up the word so that he might not sin. And he seeks him with his whole heart and he doesn't want to wander from God's commandments and his word. David seems to be concerned about wandering from God. You know, we all have times in our life where we do wander. And, and earlier when I showed those pictures of a path of the ruts, oftentimes uh, there, this word ways can also refer to like, uh, say... A two-track going through a wilderness path, <laughs> a worn pathway. And uh, you don't want to get off of that because 
the, uh, the direction that you're going, uh, if you do get off of it, you, you will wander and you, chances are you'll get stuck, chances are you'll get lost, uh, and you don't know where it's going to take you. But at least you stay on God's path, that is uh, a sure thing because God has laid it out. This is where he wants you to go. Let's not go and try to do it on our own or find a new way, a different way. Seek the Lord with all your heart. Remain focused on his word. By God's grace, we will not wander into sin. And uh, I don't know if you ever uh, read the book uh, Pilgrim's Progress. You know, he talks a lot about that, being distracted and wandering and getting off the path that is intended. Uh, and in being caught in the bogs and, and traps and, uh, and wasting years in that. Um, Pilgrim's Progress is a pretty good allegory. When tempted to sin, we are to fight back with God's word. You know, we, we take the example that Jesus did when uh, Satan was tempting him. And, uh, and uh, there was, I think, three different times there and each time satan threw something at him jesus came back with scripture and that's an example of how we can combat uh, satan combat the temptations that are in our life uh, sometimes we become lazy so in the old testament there's king david and i'm using david also as an example of of good things here but there's times in king david's life where he became lazy and he he fell into sin with Bathsheba, the, which we know uh, is a pretty um, descriptive story uh, of what happened at that time in his life. Something I'm sure he's not very proud of, uh, but yet we need to take heed to God's word because God's word will keep our minds, keep us from uh, being an enticed away. The, these things that the world has that uh may look enjoyable and fun for a moment, and we think, okay, you know, I can just indulge in this for a moment. I can get back. I'll be fine. You know, we rationalize things. And before, it's, we're, we've gone way too far, and we should never even give it a single thought to begin with. Because God wants us to be, God wants us to live a holy, righteous life. And he has given us the tools to do that through the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God. And uh, it's through the fact that we just lose, uh, we become lazy about it. So this, uh, verse 12, the psalmist is almost like a prayer for instruction. He's calling, calling out to God, it says, Blessed are you, Lord! And he says, Teach me your statutes. So he's, he's wanting God to give him direction and instruction and teach because really, we can't learn this on our own. He calls on the Lord in earnest to teach him his holy ways. Again, we cannot learn them or commit them to heart without God teaching us. We haven't really learned them until they reside in the heart, until we are doing God's word, because that's what's flowing out of us naturally. Human nature is not, uh, we don't just do it by default. We don't just obey God. We don't just obey the word of God by default. It takes work. And it takes humility. And it, it takes, uh, well, it takes a, uh, it takes a, a heart that is uh, all his, all God's. And the psalmist was seeking after the Lord for that. So this, okay, have you ever had a Bible and someone wrote inside the cover plate or inside the title page or whatnot inside your Bible? This book will keep you from sin. And then sin will keep you from this book. I had a Bible many years ago, I think maybe when I was, one of the first Bibles I had, one of my Sunday school teachers might have written that inside the cover. This book will keep you from sin. Sin will keep you from this book. That's a principle here I have written down that the psalmist understood and he longed for God to be his teacher and to keep him 
in God's word. And that really is something we need to be working at as well. Teach me, God. Teach me. Teach me to be obedient to you. Teach me to follow you. Uh, Teach me not to be uh, interested or distracted in things that you're not, you're not, uh, that you don't want for me. Uh, Okay, so then the the declaration of commitment in the next part is the last point on there, but it's got four verses to cover here. And the first one is verse 13. With my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. With my lips, I declare all the rules. So you need to know them first. They have to be in your mind to be able to recite and to say back to God. Oftentimes, God wants us to be praying scripture back to him. There's a lot of times in the word where, where people do that. And it's a good practice to uh, pray God's word back to him. And it's, it's, it, uh, it sets it more inside us when we do that. <coughs> He chooses to openly share and announce, proclaim God's word to all those around. God's judgments are worthy of repeating to others because they are righteous and true. Yeah, that word there that is uh, translated in this, this Bible, the ESV, uh, rules is also a word that can be used as judgments. Uh, righteous judgments uh, worthy of repeating to others because they are righteous and true. Do you find yourself speaking scripture casually in conversation? At home? With family? At work? Uh, In conversation in text messages? Conversation in Facebook? Communicating? Uh, so if not, we ought to be practicing it and doing it more. Really, uh, one, a lot of the commentaries will say that today people don't speak the word of God out in normal in conversation like years ago. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we don't want to offend people. There's less and less people that know anything. So if, if you do engage in conversation, it's like you completely lose them because they don't know what you're talking about. And you have to like, uh, you know, educate him a little bit. But really, God will bless that. As we speak and proclaim the truth of God's word to others, he is glorified by it. I, at work, I don't speak uh, spiritual, uh, you know, word of God conversations like I used to in the past. Uh, and I don't know, uh, I oftentimes work more by myself now, I think. I just get used to not talking. And then if I do have someone helping me through the day, it's like, you know, well, I'll send them up there. They work on that. I'll work on this. And we're not even in the same room working. Uh, but, uh, you know, we have to make a point to, uh, to, be, to be speaking God's word. It's, 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 it's a good thing to do. It's a good practice. And then verse 14, in the way of your testimonies. I delight as much as in all riches in the way of your testimonies. Way of your testimonies. Way, so this is like, like the ruts that are in the road. This is the path that God has laid out. He wants us to go in these ruts. He wants us to go in this path. So we get off of those ruts. We get, we get distracted. We can get, we can get stuck. Uh, we can get in trouble. Uh, the word way here is kind of like... Some commentaries were using it like ruts. Oftentimes you hear rut, it's like, oh, it's a bad thing. You don't want to be in a rut. You know, ruts are, you know, so you want to get out of the rut. But in, uh, in this uh, Hebrew word, it's almost like that is, uh, speaking of this is the path that's worn, this is the safe path. This is the path that others have taken. It's, it's the path that God has laid out for you. And you want to stay in it. Uh, it's, it's the way you want to go. He chooses to find great pleasure and satisfaction there. So the psalmist has great pleasure and satisfaction. He delights in it because he has learned the benefits that come from remaining within God's righteous way because he knows what's outside of that path. He knows if he ventures off, he's in trouble. If we venture outside of the way, if we go off off those ruts, 
uh, because that is the that is the uh, the pack down soil on the road. If it's a soft road that you don't you get off and you get in the soft dirt as you go, and then you get stuck. Uh, or the same thing when you're going through the snow, the ruts. You want to stay in it because when you go outside, we can become lost or stuck in a bog. Uh, and you think, okay, I can venture out just a little bit because I can see the path, but pretty soon you can't get back. David delighted in the way of the Lord because he had experienced what lurked outside of God's way that it was not good. It was not good spiritually, it wasn't good emotionally, it was stressful and, uh, and depressing. And whenever you're outside of God's way, your spirit is just telling you, this is wrong, this is wrong, and you need to get back to God. And that's the Holy Spirit, you know, talking to you. As a believer, as a Christian, we need to be, there's there's a place we need to be in our life, and it's not there. Uh, So we need to get back to where God wants us to be. And then verse 15, I will meditate on your precepts, fix my eyes on your ways. So all of these are his commitments. He says, I will do this, I will do this. Giving much thought and reflection to the teachings in his word, the psalmist is determined to follow God's way without distraction, like following the path that's laid out before him. When you're on a trip, and you're uh, going down a road, don't going. So I remember I might have shared this before, but my dad oftentimes would take us on a family vacation, and we, you know, before GPS and everything, and you just had this map. Hopefully, the map has the roads on it. We we like to go exploring, right? We like to go to places. I was like, okay, we're going out on this island, and. Uh, Let's find some places where we take some good pictures, you know, experience, uh, you know, the nature. And we're out and we're driving and like, oh, um, um, we're not, this road's not on the map. And it's like, we're just going, let's see where it goes, you know. And before long, we're going for miles on a road that's not on the map. And uh, it's, it's like, then, uh, it, but it was interesting. But the whole thing about it is we get distracted and we get sidetracked and then we have to ask for directions. It's like if you find someone, hopefully you can find someone, but you have a destination. But when we were on a vacation, we didn't have a destination. There was no destination. It's like, just let's just go. You know, wherever we end up, uh, that can uh, sometimes be fun, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes be stressful. <clears throat> Fix your eyes on Jesus, Hebrews 12, 2. Fixing your eyes on, the, on Jesus. Because the psalmist here says, I f- and fixing my eyes on your ways. So as you're going through life, we, are, we, are, we don't want to remove our eyes being distracted with the things that are in life because we want to uh, keep, keep going. Um, you know, oftentimes you look back in your spiritual journey and spiritual life and you say, man, what happened? I got derailed somewhere, and you feel like, man, I got to work my way back to where I used to be. Uh, that's, that's, you know, often happens, but sometimes life is just a roller coaster of, of things. Sometimes you have a mountaintop experience with the Lord, and you're like soaring, and then other times you're stuck in the valley of the shadow of darkness for a period of time. But even there, God is with you. <laughs> we are to meditate. And so he says here, I meditate on your precepts. So a meditation is kind of like this. To continually think over, rolling over in your mind, the word of God, or the scriptures that you have memorized, so as to explore all of its implications, allowing the Holy Spirit to give you insight and direction, uh, and to think about it throughout the day, Uh, in the different circumstances that you find yourself, having learned it and put it into practice. That means that it's not just in your mind now, it's it's in your heart. And that's what the psalmist is getting at here. I will delight your statutes, I will not forget your word. 
And, and, and again, it's a commitment to do that. So we, uh, uh, Paul tells us to rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. And, and, and it's, it's almost like here you are um, uh, choosing to delight, choosing to find enjoyment in God's word. And David chooses to delight in his word because by it he is kept from sin and finds fellowship with God. His delight results in action. Righteous living, uh, righteous living, bringing glory to God. That's what we want. That's what we want to be doing. And then it means so much to him, he determines to never forget God's word. I will never forget your word. When we put it into practice and it, uh, it governs our life and we are uh, living God's word, it's, it's one of those things where uh, uh, you don't forget it. Because it's implanted in your heart. And it's interesting because there's a lot of Old Testament passages that talks about uh, God giving the, his word uh, to people in their heart. They don't, it's almost like that at some point, uh, it's, the Holy Spirit is directing you from the inside and you don't even have to think about it because you are going to go in the right path. And it's that word of God that's in you that uh, helps make those decisions in life to go down the right path. Yeah, we all get weak at times, like I shared earlier, and we fail. And, uh, you know, David, David failed a few times in life as well. Uh, But we are promised forgiveness when we repent and come back to God in the word. David has given God's word a home in his heart. We must do that. Uh, So that's the last of the points there. So then, in summary, we are to guard our way with the word. We must lean or learn his word, study it, meditate on it, Bible scripture, uh, memorizing scripture, committing it to memory. And so... As you have time that you go through your daily devotions, pick a scripture passage and reflect over that through the day. Uh, that will be a good practice to do. And, and pray about it. And pray to God what he wants you to learn from that, from that passage. In your uh, daily or weekly Bible reading times where you might be just reading scripture, some people go through uh, like a read through the Bible in a year plan, uh, pick out passages that, that stick out to you and go over them, meditate, commit them to memory. God will bless it. Call on God for instruction how to put his word into practice. Really, it's not just memorizing the word of God. I have heard and spoken to many people who had a lot of Bible passages memorized, but they didn't have it in their heart. So what is the benefit of just having it in your mind if you're not going to use it to live by? Commit it. uh, Commit to keeping it, speaking it, delighting in it, and meditating on it. You know, this psalmist is saying that that's his desire to do. And that's what we want to do in our life. And so there, I think, I have the last. Yep, yeah, and may God bless you today. That's the ending slide I had from the last, uh, last uh, uh, one I, I preached through. But uh, let's, uh, I, I just want to have a quick little prayer, and then we'll move on. Dear God, I just want to thank you so much. I thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, God, that uh, even though life has throw, throws us Curves throws us uh, things that just get us tr- stuck and bogged down. God, uh, we have you. We have the Holy Spirit. We have your word. You've given us the tools. We've gi- you've given us everything we need, Lord. Help us to be faithful and obedient and to look into it. And God, because it is your desire that we live a life that brings glory to you. God, uh, you've done so much for us uh, through Jesus. Uh, and God, just uh, forgive us of our failings, Lord. Forgive us of, our, uh, of our, our wanderings. God, keep us. Protect us. Help us, Lord, to turn to your word. And we pray this in Jesus' name.
Amen. Uh, <clears throat>